The All Progressive Congress APC makes a U-turn and fixes national convention for March the 26th. And stop playing politics with the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, says the presidency to interest groups. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacle. The Caretaker and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee of the All Progressive Congress APC has approved March 26 for the National Convention of the Party. This was announced by John Akpan Udoidege, the National Secretary of the CECPC. Uh, some have expressed their discontent with the development. For instance, the former Director General of the Progressive Governors Forum, um, Sally Lukman, described the action as a mutiny by fraudulent politicians. According to Lukman, members of the PGF are being disrespected and its decisions and leadership are now being snubbed. Well, joining us to break this down is Biodon Shomi and Chike Chudi, both of them are political affairs analysts. Thank you so much, um, gentlemen, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Great. I'll start with you, Mr. Shomi. There's, I mean, campaign season, as I always say, is right here, it's upon us. And so we're seeing a lot of um, movements within parties. Um, some seem to be taking 10 steps forward and, you know, one step forward and 10 steps back. We've seen dates scheduled and rescheduled, whether it be in states, in zones. And now the APC has finally, we, as of yesterday, we had, we had heard that uh, the party may have to move its elections. And I also heard a party chieftain say uh, that the APC would not be stampeded into con conducting its national convention. Uh, paint a picture to the average person what you think is responsible for the uh, U-turn, the sudden U-turn by the All Progressive Congress. Yes, um, it's not totally unexpected if you look at how the whole thing um, came to a head that the convention had to be moved uh, to March 26. Uh, there had been people who were opposed to um, Tinumbu candidacy who had been busy campaigning against him within the party without throwing up any viable candidate that can really dislodge him or challenge him, um, particularly from the Southwest. And uh, you have all these um, amorphous forces, you know, fusing together, hoping if they can get him out, um, he will endorse one of their own. But rather, it came they came to the realization that Tinubu intends to stay in the race no matter the debt thrown at him. And because of that, there's a need to re-strategize and see what else do they do. Do they kill behind another candidate or, or look for a new candidate uh, who, can, who can challenge Tinubu, whether from within the Southwest zone or any part of the South? So they had that difficulty to contend with. Uh, they did put a lot of pressure on Buni, and eventually they managed to have their way by postponing the convention um, to March 26. As it stands currently, um, whether for or against, when you look at the old debate, it's always around Tinumbu. Nobody's talking about any other um, candidacy, if you, particularly from the Southwest. If you look at the vice president, his name is being touted. Uh, people were campaigning for him, but the vice president has never said um, he wants to consult or he intends to contest, you know, for that office. So you can see clearly that um, uh, the game is clear. Um, if that convention should take place, as earlier planned, uh, many fear that it may be a fatal country that Tinubu would emerge. So there's a need to re-strategize and, you know, move the dates. As against, you know, when you look at the facts as against the claim, that APC was being stampeded. That's not correct. APC, Buni led APC, chose February 26 initially for the convention. Voluntarily, nobody compelled them to do that. There was no court action that compelled them to fix it. So they were not stampeded into it. And the argument initially was because uh, they needed more time uh, because of the reconcil reconciliation going on within the states, you know. but. That became uh, a no issue when it became clear that the issues are being resolved democratically. 
if you look at how Osho's case has been resolved currently, so they could no longer rely on using that as an excuse. If it had been a close contest between Aregbe Shola and Uyetola, they probably would have lashed on that, that look, the party will be divided, they would lose the state to the opposition. So when they lost that argument, there is nothing else to, uh, to say or to do other than to just, you know, simply throw off um, excuses and postpone it. Mm. From, what, from what you've said, I'm getting two things. You're telling me that the All Progressive Congress does not want the candidates from the Southwest, the only one that has emerged to pick the ticket because they think it's a bit too strong. Again, you're also saying that the party um, has called off its national convention because of one man. How is that possible? No, what I'm saying basically is that the APC more or less has agreed, you know, that the candidate, the presidential candidate should emerge from the South. If you look at all the people contesting for the chairmanship, they are all from the North. So it's clear what they are trying to do. The issue is, in the South, there is only one candidate that has remained dominant, you know, moving around, uh, doing consultations, indirect campaigning, um, and that's the candidate they're talking about. He has those who are for him and those who are against him. So you have very powerful forces within the APC who are for Tinubu. There are also powerful forces against him. So this maneuvering uh, by postponing the convention, in my view, is with a view uh, to see whether they can produce an alternative candidate that could upstage Tinubu if they cannot get away with consensus. Don't forget the issue of consensus has its own drawback. All can aspirants must agree, you know, to a consensus arrangement, and that's what the law says. And I suspect that's part of the reason why the electoral, uh, the new electoral act has not been signed. Let's look at um, other candidates within the party and 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 see, you know, their structure, their spread. I mean, so far within the APC, the Aboyin State Governor has declared his interest. Dodgers or Kalu has also thrown his hat into the ring. Um, uh, recently, I spoke with the former governor of Imo State, who is a former senator also, um, and and he also is one of those people who has decided that he wants to be president. Um, looking at all of these people, there is none at all that can at least upstage the leader of the party. No, very powerful um, candidates, you know, across. Uh, possible candidates across the whole of the South. The problem is nobody is presently campaigning the way Tinubu is doing it. Uh, is remains a candidate to be challenged, um, no matter how you look at it, whether it's from the South, East, Southwest, or South South. Is the only one moving around. You have a feel as if is the consensus candidate. I have not seen any serious challenge in terms of uh, consultation or campaigning or whatever you know, to his candidacy. Rather, what you have is um, the media hates and the activists of um, uh, other people trying to, you know, uh, to, to frustrate him with um, numerous um, allegations, hmm. you know, and that's what is going on currently. Whether for or against, whatever they're talking about in APC today is about Tinubu when it comes to the presidential elections. And that is also informing the debate on who will be the chairman of the party, the new chairman of the party. Uh, people are thinking about this one will be too sympathetic to Tinubu, or he wouldn't. You know, when you look at that, what about other candidates? They're all there. But the fact of the matter is they are not, you know, prosecuting the ambition, you know, on the same frequency as Tinubu is doing for it. Well, I think we're being joined by Achike Chude. Um, Achike, I don't know if it, the, the background sound is coming from you, but uh, if, if you can turn down the volume of your TV, if, you're, if that's what's causing the background noise. But quickly, joining us, uh, we want to hear what you think is the main crisis within the party. Don't forget, the past governors are angry. Of course, they feel snubbed. And this is also part of the problem. We also know that there's been divisions within the party at state levels, local governments, even at zonal levels. And here we are. After all of the whispering, the pushing, the shoving, the speculations, the party has moved finally to say we're pushing um, the convention to March 26, even though we're going to 
at least have a zonal convention in between. But what do you think uh, is underneath all of this? <laughs> Politics is, uh, is underneath um, uh, what is going on. These are politicians, and this is the period for politics. And so uh, because uh, there is a heightened expectation, heightened ambitions, and for them, the stakes are very high, uh, don't forget that uh, most of uh, these people do not do any other thing outside of politics. They are like fish out of water. Uh, you know, out of water, of course, the fish will die. Uh, you know, so a lot of them see politics as a purely business and not service. That is why the country is the way it is. Um, you know, so uh, in a period of, um, ex, you know, heightened uh, expectations, you have all kinds of political moves and political maneuvering. And, um, uh, you, you know, and of course, but again, there is a background to it. There's a context, and that is the fact that uh, APC has never really been a political party. It has been a conglomeration of all kinds of people that uh, do not have any serious pro-people ideological agenda. Uh, you, you know, and so um, it is not for nothing that uh, the president at the time warned about uh, the possibility of um, the PDP uh, upsetting the APC in an election if they do not get their acts right. Obviously, the APC is a house divided against itself. And that is not to say that the PDP has not got issues. But, you know, the issues of uh, the PDP pale into insignificance relatively when you are talking about uh, what is going on uh, in the APC. APC, in a way, has become like uh, the Fuji house of uh, commotion. And, and uh, don't forget that um, uh, shortly after they came to power, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the first things that happened, one of the major outings of the APC ended in chaos and disorder. And that was the issue of uh, the uh, presidency of uh, the national of the Senate, yeah, you know? And so we have seen all of these crises uh, one after the other. You look at the last uh, state congresses, how it ended up, uh, you, you know? So um, this is exactly what, what is leading to uh, what is going on. First of all, there is no consensus, there is no unity, you know, about what to do with the party. There is no cementing ideological compass that binds membership of the party together. Uh, you, you know, so there is no uh, ethics or ethos, you know, that wills the party together. So it is every man for himself. Whatever you can grab, you grab it as much as possible. And then you have a little bit of, um, uh, a, you know, a, a semblance of a, of a party. But obviously the party is not united. And that is why everything that we're seeing is, I mean, we're seeing today, of course, it's all about 2023, who becomes but do you, president but, but, of but, but Mr. Chude, do you not think that at some point, the a, or maybe the crack within the APC, uh, I mean, let's ignore the Senate leadership in Broglio, but the crack within the party started when the Buni led committee um, got into office. Don't you think that this is when everything went bust? The, the party, you know, the party, the, I mean, the crack has always been there. Don't forget that immediately um, uh, Oyegun led the APC to victory, you know, in 2015. He began to have issues. And it was these issues eventually that led to his ouster. Of course, there are political differences. You had, you know, state, uh, you know, congresses that did not, whose outcome did not uh, exactly play some party big wigs. You know, so there was a, a buildup of uh, of crisis and momentum that led to the ouster of uh, Chief Oyegu, and then Adam Soshomole came in. And then after some time, again, it became a game of musical chairs. Adam Soshomole was also removed. So you have, even when you have, you know, a chairman of the party that were duly, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, elected as, as, as the leaders of the party, it, that still did not help. So it also did not help that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Buni uh, was, was a chairman of necessity. And it was all about the political maneuvering that led to the uh, removal of Adams or Shomole that eventually led to the loss of uh, Edo State by the APC in the governorship election. Uh, you know, so uh, this is what has been happening. And of course, obviously, uh, from the moment uh, Buni came in, there were people who were on his side. He had the blessings of the president. But obviously, there are also people who were really opposed to him. And so this is what we see playing out. 
des, des suspects, for instance, the, the, the postponement of uh, the convention indefinitely and then a few hours later, uh, it was fixed for March 26, is clearly an indication of a chairman that exactly that is exactly not in control of the navigation of the of the APC ship. But but uh, but, but, but so, again, I'm sorry. Uh, as much as we would want to look at um, Governor Melai Buni, May May Buni, I beg your pardon, as as someone who should be in control of the party. We also see that the party does have a lot of strong men, just as um, Mr. Shawumi has been saying. Uh, he feels that at the bottom of, of this, uh, you know, is the fight for um, supremacy. And of course, some people trying to dodge the leader of the party emerging as the final flag bearer of the party. So can you say that Buni is a strong man or someone who can really steer the ship when there are many other demigods within the party? Well, the crisis that has been devoted at the APC, even under his chairmanship, his leadership, is an indication that he has not exactly been able to steady the ship of state. Don't forget that there have been all kinds of reconciliation committees that were set up in the past by the APC. Most of this, uh, you know, uh, efforts at, uh, uh, you know, fostering peace within the party uh, did not exactly work, work out. You know, and so, uh, it, it, there, are, there are so many centrifugal forces at play right now within the APC, pulling at different, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, in different direction, you know, and, uh, and so it is part of the challenge that he's having. He has not somehow been able to have, and I don't know whether, I, and I can't exactly say that it is not because he has the clout, but it is about satiating the interest of all of these people because. You see, politics is, is a game of interest too, as well as as, as as well as you know it being a game of numbers. So how do you bring all the various interests, all the various egos, you know, into the mix? And, and then ultimately at the end of the day, you come up with a formula that is acceptable to the vast majority of membership of the party. I think that has been a very big problem. And I'm not even sure that by 26th of March, when the convention holds, that all of these you know, uh, problems uh, you know, we, we will be uh, uh, taken care of. And, and it's a very critical issue, a critical period for the APC. People do not, uh, people tend to forget the fact that in the last election in 2019, that the APC actually did better than the PDP in terms of the number of states. So the PDP actually did better than the APC in terms of the new number of uh, the, the new states that were won under the PDP platform. And then the various, uh, you know, elections at, the, at both, uh, you know, senatorial and then, you know... Uh, but you can uh, also uh, say that most of... So, I mean, as much as the PDP did well, most of their governors have also defected back to the APC. So um, did they really do well? Uh, maybe those people just yeah. wanted to win elections on the platform yeah, of the yeah. PDP. Well, well, again, again, it's also part of the politics of uh, 2023. The governors who defected, we know, did not defect on the basis of any ideology. They don't believe in, in ideology. And that's why it is they find comfort with each other. You displace somebody at the PDP, goes to APC, displace him, it goes back to the PDP. And so it's a game of musical chairs, you know? And so it was based on the tentative promise that some of these governors were given at okay. a particular point in time. But even beyond that, there is no, uh, 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 nobody can say for sure they are not going to have a lot of party big wigs leaving the APC for the PDP if they do not handle the present crisis properly, especially after the convention. So, you know, they are all on slippery, on slippery slope. Okay. Let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Shomi. Let's talk about the aggrieved governors, the governors who feel like they have been snubbed, just as I said in the beginning. How, do, how does the party even begin to deal with that? I mean... Governors, whether past or present, I mean, we've also seen the class of 1999 governors also trying to raise their heads within parties, and I'm talking about both political parties, but within the APC, seeing what's happened in Ekiti State, um, seeing what's happened in um, Oshun State, um, what's going to give in order to deal with the governors, whether they be the class of 1999 or this, the, the present governors? Well, we, we, of course, we are talking about uh, very powerful people within the within the APC, and then I don't know how many of them are as powerful as the governors. Of course, don't forget uh, the influence that governors have over delegates that come to the national uh, convention. 
uh, you know, so you need to actually appease some of uh, these uh, governors, but how they are going to be appeased because you have all kinds of contending interests. So what, I mean, so, uh, and, and the danger of appeasing a particular governor is that in trying to assuage him and, you know, uh, in, uh, appease him on the basis of satiating his interest, you end up displeasing some other people, you know, so uh, obviously there has to be a way to bring all of them to the uh, negotiating table, all of them with disparate interests uh, and disparate views, and then get to hear from them. And then also emphasize the fact that the president has emphasized some months back, that if they do not get their house in order, they are going to suffer very huge losses during the election. Perhaps it might be the fear of these losses, which would also affect their fortune, that might get them to try to be reasonable and to try to work within the structure of uh, the party within the guidelines of uh, the party. Obviously, they are going to put their cards on the table. They have to be able to express themselves and tell whoever is in charge what exactly their problem is. And then on the basis of that, you look at the aggregation of the different interests of all the contending governors, and then look for bottom lines, you know, a minimum uh, 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 you know, level of trying to sat satiate every single one. Not all of them is going to have a about negotiation. And in negotiation, you don't come you know, with the desire or with the mindset of win-win, you know, of taking everything. But it is all about all of us winning, uh, you know, and then all of us losing if we have to. So they must be able to give in order to get. That is the essence of a negotiation. And I think that that's right now, that this is what the party uh, needs. Uh, and then they, they be ultimately, at the end of they'll be able to come up with a consensus. But again, even beyond that is the fact I would agree in your last dis your discussion with uh, show me, there are certain contending forces in this country that do not want certain politicians to emerge as president. They do not want you know politicians that are strong, that have strong will, that have character. I'm not talking about their moral disposition because I don't exactly know you know how much what the ethical or moral foundation of most of these politicians are. Mm -hmm. A lot of them you know uh, are mercenaries. I mean, you just said that somebody, a chieftain of the party, accused you know accused them of uh, being Yahoo Yahoo governors, and some of the governors, even some of the godfathers of uh, these political parties, also could be described as Yahoo Yahoo. Otherwise, the country will not be where it is. So, what people have been doing all this while is to get access to political power, and and the basis of that of their access to power to be able to loot the treasury of their states and the treasury of the federal government. That is the primary motivation of a lot of these politicians that even want to run for the presidency of this country. And if you look back, if you look back at the performances of some of these governors, if we had an enduring democracy, if we had, you know, uh, enduring democracy with proper democratic institutions, you know, and uh, proper anti-corruption watchdogs, a lot of the people that are contesting or that want to contest, uh, you know, for or that are aspiring for the presidency of this country will be in jail, will be jailbirds at this particular point in time. So it says a lot about the nature and character of the Nigerian state that all manners of people who have looted, you know, the 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 uh, you know uh, the, the treasures of their state and subverted, you know, the, the the institutions of their state across the entire country are today also justly to be able to have the opportunity to do the same thing at the federal level from okay. the Nigerian situation. All right, let's try and see if we've gotten Mr. Shomi back. Um, Mr. Shomi, can you hear me? Uh, I think that we're still having connection. Yes, I can hear you. Ah, okay, you can hear me, perfect. You've heard most of the I things that uh, Mr. Chude has said about the party. So I want to take you back. I remember, um, last year when the APC was doing its re-registration uh, for members of the political parties, um, we saw a lot of problems in states. I remember clearly what happened in Kwara State. It was, I mean, it was a terrible situation. People were fighting and going at each other's throats. We also know that that issue within the states are still lingering. States, just a few APC states barely have problems. But almost every state in the APC has a pending issue. And then at some point, the party, the CECPC said they were going around uh, sending committees to address these issues. But then the states will still come out to say that no issues have been addressed so far. 
And until those issues are addressed, it might affect the Congresses, which have mostly been paralleled um, for the past year. Uh, and I'm making, I'm, I'm calling states like, um, like Rivers. I'm talking about, I mean, even Zamfara State, they still have issues. Um, Kwara State also is one of those states. We saw what happened uh, between uh, the former governor, Reb Shola, and of course the, the sitting governor. Uh, we've also seen what's happening in, um, in Ekiti State, even though um, certain members of the party have gone to court, the others have said, well, we'll sheath our, our, our swords and, and you know, walk in the interest of the party. So looking at all of these de teething problems, do you think um, that this zonal convention that the APC is going to be doing will, ad will help address those issues? And how will that determine the, the level of committedness or uh, everybody coming together for the success of the general convention or the national convention in itself? Mr. Shoumi, can you hear me? What is in and even official? Uh, there are disputed issues between sitting governors and past governors, um, except in the case of um, Sanfara and River State. Um, those are two um, uh, exceptions uh, where they are not between the governor, the sitting governor, and the past governor. But in the case of other states, this will continue, and you are likely going to see a realliance between political uh, forces in the in the state, either with the, between the two political. You are likely going to have some in APC who are dissatisfied, you know, trying to align with PDP. And also you find people within the PDP who are dissatisfied with the way the uh, presidential candidate will emerge, also aligning with APC. So we are likely going to have this mixed match, you know, these twist, twisting and turnings, you know, by the two major political parties. APC certainly is right uh, on stage currently. That's why we're uh, looking at it. PDP is also in a very precarious situation when it comes to uh, the issue of presidential candidate. But whether... Mr. Shomi, are you still there? Oh, I think we have lost you. Well, to wrap things up, uh, I want to say thank you, unfortunately, because time is not on our side, uh, to Biodo Shomi, who is a political affairs analyst, and to Achike Chude, who is also a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen. The internet has not been so fair, but thank you for being part of the conversation. All right. Thank you. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we will be looking at the issue of the Electoral Act bill yet again, because the president is telling those mounting pressure on the president to sign the Electoral Act Amendment bill that the right thing will be done within the lawful time. Stay tuned. We'll come back and talk.